Welcome back friends. Uh, in this quick video we are going to talk about polymorphism. So what is polymorphism? You may be heard this name many a times but you, you are confused to know what is polymorphism and all. So polymorphism is again in, in the study of population genetics. Uh, polymorphism is set place in a population when uh, two members or at least two or more than two members of the population are having different phenotypic expression. That's what polymorphism is. So if you take a population and you look for all the different individuals of that population, if all of them are having same type of phenotypes, we can tell that that population is not having any polymorphism. They are monomorphic in nature. So what do we mean by polymorph or monomorph? So let's first talk about that. So we are talking here polymorphism. So we are talking about polymorph. So poly means many. Mons, morph means types. So different types or many type of what? Of phenotypic expression or like morphology or structure and all this. So many type of phenotypic expression. Phenotype. Okay. And if we talk about monomorph, that means one type of phenotypic expression. So in a population, so if I, if I draw this scenario here, if a population, inside of this population, we are having many different individuals, many individuals, let's say among them, this is population A, and let me draw another population, this one, this population is, let's say this is population B, now in this population, we can get, let's say, this two different variety, so in this first population, or population A, this is population B, okay. So in this first population or population A, we are having all the individuals are having same characteristics, same physical characteristics, same morphology. So all the phenotypic expression are same. So we can tell that all of the members here are monomorphic in nature. Now in this case, what we can see in this population B, we have seen two different type of phenotypic expression, one red, one black, right? So for this reason, we can tell this type of population is a polymorphic population. Okay, now when we call it a polymorphic, if two or more than two different characteristics is shown inside a population, so here we can see two different variety of characteristics. That's why it's a polymorphic. If we get more than two different characteristics inside a population, we will also tell it as polymorphic population. Now in this case, we are seeing two different characteristics. So we can call this as uh, dimorphic. Dimorphic population. An example for this dimorphic uh, population or dimorphism is sexual dimorphism that is shown in many populations like us human being like all the different populations we are going to see there is a sexual dimorphism that means one type of phenotype shown for male one type of phenotype shown for females so that is called the example is sexual dimorphism morphism amongst among a population okay now, we can get more than this variety. Now, another very important point about this polymorphism is that why polymorphism arised? How they are arised? Polymorphism usually arises due to any kind of genotypic change because what we see in phenotype is definitely due to some change in genotype, right? Due to, due to the genotypic expression. So, any change in genotype will reflect onto the phenotype. So, that is why if we are having mutation in genotype it will reflect and it will change the morphogenesis or morpho morphology of the population so it, it will become polymorphic from monomorphic due to mutation so mutation mutation is one of the cause for this kind of change now another example for uh, and, and uh, the examples for them uh, another property I must say about the polymorphism is that once a population get a polymorphism for example as a result of mutation in their genome it gets some polymorphic nature now that polymorphic nature as they get it it will be inherited so it is 
heritable in nature. So the property of polymorphism is heritable. So inside a population, if sometimes this polymorphism arises, it should be heritable. So it is also heritable in nature. So these are the major properties of polymorphism. And due to this mutation and polymorphism arises, that changes a kind of course inside the population. Sometimes the polymorphism found to be effective and good for the population and population get advantage in natural selection. Sometimes they won't get advantage and polymorphism found to be have a negative effect on them. Okay. And, and another thing, the examples for the polymorphism, not only in the physical level like that I've talked about, the morphology, the structure, and their behavior, uh, so but but mean di many different ways like gene gene genetic mor mor polymorphisms. Uh, so change in the genetic regions, obviously that should be there. So genetic polymorphism can be there. Biochemical polymorphism can be there. So there are many variety of polymorphism. For example, the genetic polymorphism example is. Uh, the blood grouping of human beings. So you can see, uh, in case of sexual dimorphism, we are having only two morphs. But in case of blood group of human being, we are having four different morphs. A, B, A, B, and O. Right? So, so on, we are having different type of polymorphism. The gene for our globin, so beta globin gene uh, of our body, it is having, it is sharing a very, various, long kind of polymorphism throughout the population. Okay. So these are the examples of polymorphisms and I hope uh, that helps you to understand and usually nowadays what we can guess is we can uh, compare this polymorphism from population to population. Now if a population is getting more polymorphisms we can tell that population is more diverse, that population is more uh, versatile in nature and a population having less polymorphism we can tell this is less versatile in nature. That means if we are having more polymorphism more diversity is there in the population, less polymorphism, less diversity in the population. But all of these things, polymorphisms and all these things, these are the raw materials towards the evolution. It helps the it helps a population to grow and go forward, right? So that's kind of it. And we can compare this polymorphism from population to population, even from person to person and different generations. And by looking at it, we can tell it's, it's it, it provides a unique pattern of flow of the information. Okay, so use modern day we can use many, many techniques to find that polymorphism, especially the genetic polymorphism, right? And we can understand that using different techniques. And you can find the videos on different techniques that usually uses this polymorphism to account for this polymorphism. So that's kind of it, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.